hello. Welcome to the Normal Intuitive. My name is Nancy and this is podcast number eight. Can you believe it? Welcome to everyone that is joining me for the first time and thank you so much for listening again, those that have listened before. Just a quick intro before we begin. My name is Nancy. I am a psychic medium, which means I do connect with people that have passed on. Yes, that includes your grandpa and your best friend. And I also run a website at one-question.net. That's one spelled out. And I'm on Instagram at the number one question at a time. And on Facebook, I have a page. It's facebook.com forward slash one question at a time, one spelled out. So that's where you can find me. I am also a pretty normal spouse of 11 years, a mom to two living children, We live in New England. I have two cats, two dogs, and no partridge in the pear tree. And I start each podcast episode with a mom confession. And I was trying to think of one because there's a lot, but I'm going to tell you about the one that happened this morning when I put my son in timeout. So for reasons I'm not going to explain on the podcast, my son was naked and I had to put him in timeout and I put him in the hallway. We were all getting dressed for church and I'm trying to get dressed and I look over and my four-year-old son is peeing on the hallway floor in timeout. And immediately I scream, what in the world are you doing? And he said, I couldn't help it. To which I ran to the other room, woke up my still sleeping husband and said, you need to deal with this. Went back in my room and shut the door. Because at that point, I really, like I had no explanation for why in the world my son was peeing on the floor. He's been potty trained for two years. He was in timeout, but both my children know that even when they're in timeout, they can still always go to the bathroom. So I just, I, I, I do not even understand it, but needless to say, we did not make it to church this morning and the morning started out pretty bad because for some reason, my nine-year-old daughter, who I swear is acting like 19, was yelling because she still hasn't had her room clean and I was pretty much done. I mean, it was one of those mornings where you wake up and you go, why the hell did I even wake up this morning? Why can't I just put the covers back over? Because none of this is good. The peeing on the floor, the speaking to me, you know, and using these curse words that my nine-year-old daughter is like, like she's superior, which, you know, why I don't even understand it. Like when children feel this need to curse and it's like, ha, ah, you know, ah, I can curse just like you. And it's like, but it doesn't sound, well, first of all, it doesn't sound right for anyone to curse, but you know, when your kids do it, it's just kind of like, come on, like, why are you doing like, why, why does it, does it sound cool? But really it just shows me that you don't have enough adjectives to describe how you're feeling. And that's how I try and phrase it to them is let's think of other ways to phrase it instead of cursing. Because if anyone knows me, it's, I have a horrible time cursing, especially when I'm upset. I just, I have such a sailor's mouth, which is actually my, my sailor's, my potty mouth is worth than my husband. And my husband is actually a sailor. He's in the Navy. So it figures that I'm the one that curses and my husband is very Zen-like. So that's my mom confession. Uh, just a quick warning. This podcast is probably going to go a little bit over the 20 minutes that I like to keep it at because I think that what I want to discuss is so important. And I know that you all love this quick little bite of, of podcast that I give you, but today I promise you it's worth the 25 minutes that we're going to talk. And so I, the, the title of this podcast, I've already found a name. Usually I have to think of like the title after I do the podcast, but Today, I knew right away what it was going to be. It's going to be when the chicken came home to roost and finding your joy. So this is get ready, buckle in, start cleaning whatever you're doing and get ready to start hearing about my new rooster named Beyonce. If you aren't on my Facebook page, this is the time to go on my Facebook page and read about my new six foot rooster named Beyonce. So I want to tell you a little bit of background about this rooster. So first of all, I read this blog by the bloggers, bloggers, blog, bloggers, bloggers, back in 2011. And this blog, and I believe it's titled, This is Why You Pick Your Battles, 
And it's on the, it's a link on my Facebook page, but I remember reading this thing and laughing so hard. I was crying. It was so hysterical. And we were living in Hawaii and I knew right away I wanted a six foot chicken. Like I just knew I had to have a very, or rooster. I, I had to have a very large rooster. Like it was just so like how she wrote was so magical and so hysterical that I'm, I am sure sales for six foot chickens and roosters like went up and skyrocketed because, you know, someone's tracking the sales of, you know, foil or, 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 you know, metal rooster somewhere, somewhere there is a tracking for this. And they spiked after that blog, but we were living in Hawaii. And if you know anything about Hawaii, it's pretty hard to, you know, get things from the mainland. I don't even think Ikea ships there still. And so, (laughs) you know, like there was no way I was going to get a six foot rooster in Hawaii. So, I fast forward a few years and my family flew to Texas for the weekend for a family event. And I was pretty freaking depressed. I was missing my daughter that we had lost a few years prior. And we were in this hotel room and I had been like sobbing and we're in this hotel and we're walking out to the lobby. And what do I see but a six foot rooster? And all of a sudden I just start burst out laughing like laughing like I hadn't laughed in days. And I go up to these people. Now, why they were in this hotel, I have no clue. But I go up to this couple, and they were probably a little bit younger than us. And I go, where did you get this rooster? And they were like, oh, like 30 miles yonder. They didn't say yonder, but, you know, it's Texas, so I had to throw that in. But 30 miles, you know, down the road, and there's this man that's making them. And I'm like, oh, my God, this reminds me of Beyonce. And they started cracking up because, yes, they indeed had heard of Beyonce. Beyonce is beyond famous. And that's why they were getting this rooster. So I was like, can I take a picture with your rooster? And they were like, of course. And so I was so proud of myself. I took a picture with Beyonce. I put it as my Facebook photo for weeks about, look what I found in Texas. I found my Beyonce. So needless to say, time went on and I have never forgotten about Beyonce and wanting this rooster. And every once in a while I would talk about it with my husband and he's like, no, 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 we're not getting a six foot rooster, please. No. So yesterday I took my daughter lacrosse, totally was not thinking about Beyonce, but we drove past a tractor supply co. And I recall over Christmas time hearing from some Facebook friends that were talking about, they had like light up roosters, which I thought were also historically, hysterically funny. Like I want a light up rooster. I want like a whole flock of like light up roosters for for Christmas because it has absolutely nothing to do with Christmas. And it's just funny. Like, can you just imagine like a whole flock of like huge, huge light up roosters? Like I would go see that house. So anyway, so we go by this tractor supply co store and I'm like, I wonder if they have roosters. So I mentioned it to my daughter who also knows about Beyonce. We all know about Beyonce in this house. And I said, well, you know what? While you're at your game, I'm going to look it up. I'm going to see if they have any roosters. And I'm thinking they can't. Like, it's May. Like, why would you sell a six-foot rooster outside of Christmas time? So we go to the game, and, and my daughter's playing, and I decide to look up. And I think maybe they'd have to ship it to the store if they have one. So I type in rooster. First thing that pops up is a six-foot foot, six foot tall rooster. And not only that, it has like 56 five-star reviews five stars from 56 people. That means in the United States alone, from Tractor Supply Co., there is at least 56 people that have a six-foot rooster somewhere in their yard. So I think we should have like a rooster hunt. Like, you know, it's almost like, you know, you, you know, when you're driving across the United States and you're looking for like license plates, I think we should have like a Beyonce contest. We need to pinpoint where all of the six-foot roosters are where all the six foot Beyonce's are, but there were 56 five-star reviews about how fabulous this rooster was. And a few of them were even talking about the fact that they couldn't just have one six foot rooster that they had to get a friend. Well, I was sold on the fact, but did I really want to frustrate my husband? But it was in stock. I mean, it was fate. The rooster was in stock and there were wonderful reviews. So, okay. I tell, I tell Helen the game's over. I say, okay, we, we have to at least check. We have to check if the rooster's there. So we go to the tractor supply co and immediately in the doorway, there's a six foot Beyonce. Done. We go inside. I'm like, well, 
maybe there's just one. No, there were seven, several six foot tall roosters throughout the store. So I go up to the register because I don't know, like, do you grab this huge six foot roaster and like carry it around the store? I totally would have, by the way, but I go up to the register and I go, you know, and there's like this long line behind me and I go, I would like a six foot rooster. And the woman kind of sighs. <sighs> she rolls her eyes. She goes over the intercom and this is, this is when I knew it was meant to be. She goes over the intercom and she says, I need help transporting a six foot rooster out of the store to the front, six foot rooster. And I go, that's it. Fate. I knew it. So I pay. And by the way, this rooster was not cheap, $200. But you know, what's also fate. The previous night at an intuitive party that I did, I happened to make $200. So tell me it was not meant to be to get this six foot rooster. I happen to make $200. And then here's this $200 rooster meant to be check. So I go, well, this rooster can't be that heavy. So I pick up the rooster. I, so, so the woman's like, well, which one do you want? And I'm like, do you have more in the back? Like, do I have this wide selection of six foot roosters? Like, how do you know how many six foot roosters to order in the store? Like, how do you, how do you know? Like, is there such a demand that I, I want to be that purchasing agent? That's like, well, the six foot roosters are done. So like, who does that? And how many are we selling? How many are in this area? I, these are all questions that I need to know. So I'm like, well, I need to see if I can pick this thing up because I don't need help taking it to the car. If, if I can do it, fine. Oh, I also learned that this six foot rooster could be broken down if I needed to, to get it in the car. So I pick this thing up and I can carry it. And I start carrying this rooster out of the car. And my, my daughter is following me with my phone, like recording this whole thing, laughing hysterically. And as I'm carrying this six foot rooster, I'm passing people. And every single person I passed starts cracking and smile, cracking up and smiling. Like you cannot help but smile at a six foot rooster. Here's this rooster freaking bigger than me. And I am carrying this thing out to my car. So then I like take it. I, I like put it. I had, I had backed my car up because I, I knew I was going to get this rooster. Let's be honest. And I take it to the back and I'm like, okay, how the hell am I going to get this thing in? And of course, like all of a sudden right behind me, these two men come up and say, do you need help getting that year rooster in your car? And at first I was like, no, I'm woman. Hear me roar. I can do this. So I try and put Beyonce in the car and I'm thinking, no, it's like Tetris. So these guys are just standing there laughing. Not at me. I wasn't taking it personally. Laughing at the fact. I mean, think about this. Think about this from an outsider's point of view. This is what, I mean, I am not a big woman. I am like five, five. I'm like, I'm not going to tell you what I weigh, but I am not a big woman. And this rooster is clearly bigger than me, freaking six feet tall. And I'm trying to manage this rooster in the car. Meanwhile, my daughter is still recording the whole thing, just cracking up. So these men are also laughing. Like I'm getting like this crowd behind me just laughing and watching me put this rooster in the car. Finally, I just put the rooster down. I'm like, no, can we, can you help me? So now there's like three of us, two men and I trying to get this rooster Beyonce in the car. We're trying, we're doing Tetris. I'm moving my seats front and back, trying to navigate putting this rooster in and then we get it in. So my daughter who has never sat in the front seat before I go, well, Beyonce needs to be protected. So you need to sit in the front seat to which my daughter like gasps. The fact that I was choosing the rooster safety over her. Actually, I really wasn't. I had her put her seat all the way back. She's nine. She, she's, she's a strong girl. So she, I put her, I put her seat all the way back just in case of the airbag. So she was safe. We drove very safe, drove very, very safe home. And then, and then the money time. So I pull up and there were some guys working in our house yesterday and as I'm getting this Brewster out of the car, there's men working, like going back and forth in the house and they look at the rooster. And of course they start laughing because again, you cannot not smile at this rooster. So I say to one of them, can you ask the gentleman of the house to come to the door? And the guy looks at me and just shakes his head. So if you've read the blog, you know what happens when Beyonce goes to the door with the husband. And that's exactly what I was thinking, except my daughter was filming. So I, I position Beyonce right at the front door and I knock. My husband opens it and I'm thinking in my head, knock, knock MF, but hear, hear that voice, but hear with the cursing in it. 
And my husband just looks at it. And it's about as tall as...